spoilers ahead. Consider yourself warned. Okay, when I first watched the trailer for this movie, although I was a little doubtful that this whole modern day manners in a 16th century scenery thing was gonna work, it looked promising. It made me chuckle a few times. Now get up you lazy cow. I have cholera. You do not have cholera. So I was curious to see it. Well, I finally did and it's something. Let me start at the beginning, I guess. Maybe it's weird, but it really annoys me when movies do this. They want to set the plot in these different countries, but still make everything English. And don't come for me, I understand that it's to reach a broader audience. It's an American film company making films for English speakers. I get it, it still annoys me. I much prefer when they have some lines in there from the original language that was actually spoken and then introduce a clever reason for them to be speaking English instead of that other language. But that's really not something that I should dwell on. Yeah, life is the movie doesn't start out too bad with a romantic scene between Rosaline and Romeo and we get the gist of their personalities. He's this hopeless romantic and she's sarcastic. It doesn't take long for the jabs to start though. Four minutes in, we get Rosaline waking up and complaining about how if she could do what she wanted, she wouldn't have to sneak around. And her caretaker or nurse saying she went to nurse school for years and still doesn't get any recognition. So again, yeah, life is unfair. This is a modern retelling of the story, so this type of thing is to be expected. And although what she's saying was true and they're sort of poking fun at it, 2022 being what it is, I can't avoid rolling my eyes a little bit when I hear things like that. They didn't even say it in a super obnoxious way or anything, but this type of line is so overdone nowadays that I can't help but be a bit cynical about it. Just a little bit. Still, I remain positive and hopeful. It wouldn't last long, as not one minute later, there it was again, with the dress. <sighs> Can we stop the misconception that women only wore those dresses for the sake of men, and that every single woman in the history of the world hated wearing them? Period dresses are absolutely gorgeous. And I don't mean period, I mean period. There's plenty of people demystifying the idea of painful historical clothing. Sure, it wouldn't be as comfy as our stretchy sweatpants, and some garments were certainly uncomfortable to wear, but come on. Give it a break. We proceed to be introduced to the typical gay best friend. Girl, that is one tasty Montego. And why do they always have to make them sound so incredibly obnoxious? I just wonder if all this drama is adding to the attraction. Do they always have to act like this? Can we get a little diversity in the personality of the gay best friend character? please, because it feels like more of a caricature and I really don't know who finds this funny or enjoyable anymore. You could keep the house and watch the children. Yes. Wait, what? Hmm? Well, you're off writing verse, I'm home changing diapers. What's so wrong about changing diapers? Why does every piece of media have to make it sound like it's unworthy or beneath us? Motherhood is valuable and it's fine if you want to pour your whole attention into it. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. At this point, I was starting to wonder why not set it in modern times instead of historical ones if they're just gonna speak in a contemporary way and bash everything about the olden days. Or is that the whole point? Maybe it is, and you just can't expect anything other from movies today. Wait a second. So the whole trailer is trying to make him look like the bad guy, when in reality, he tells her he loves her. I love you. She just stands there looking like this, doesn't say it back, instead invites him to a ball the next day that he goes to, even though he's putting his life at risk by being there. She accidentally ditches him at this thing where a heartbroken Romeo runs into none other than Juliet. And he's gonna be the bad guy? Are you serious? She is such a bratty bitch. She's unlikable, plain and simple. A rich teenager complaining about not being able to do whatever she wants, treating her family like crap, embarrassing them on public square, always upset and unwilling to talk to anyone she doesn't deem to be at her level. At some point, she takes her younger cousin, Juliet, to a bar and teaches her how to manipulate men into getting her free drinks. Why on earth would I want to spend the rest of my life with someone like that? 
Ew, you're not here to find someone to spend your life with. You're here to just enjoy yourself at their expense and then never see them ever again, okay? Lovely, just lovely. She has her moments where she's funny and you can see her start to grow as a person in the second half of the movie, but we'll get there. Because first we have to have some more of these wonderful lines. You know I'm not just your daughter, right? I have opinions, ideas, passions of my own. Seriously, it's just copy paste the same speech over and over again. I can help. I know I can. I was born to do more than marry some useless prince. And the encyclopedia, Thackeray, and the essays of Mary Wollstonecraft. And I did it on my own account. For my own learning, which mother said was the best way to become a young woman. I'm as strong as a boy and I prefer to be outdoors instead of cooped up in a kitchen. I pick you to be my princess. What about my work? I don't want a life stuck waving from a royal box. Why is it that who I am and what I want doesn't matter? When girls can do anything a boy can do and more. Women, they, they have minds and they've got ambition and they've got talent as well as just beauty and I'm so sick of people saying that, that love is just all a woman is fit for I'm so sick of it and I'm sick of these predictable lines if the movie focused more on being entertaining rather than condescending it could have been great it actually has some genuinely funny moments and they did try to do something a bit original that took some creativity and that's more than I can say for some other Disney movies so I'll give them that. As we start approaching the third act, the movie becomes a lot more enjoyable. Rosaline finally admits the error of her ways and acknowledges not only her part in losing Romeo, that maybe they weren't meant to be in the first place. She also starts realizing that perhaps she judges people too harshly and even though she doesn't become a delicate flower or anything close, she does apologize, learns that it's okay to ask for help when you need it and makes it up to Romeo and Juliet by helping them escape. All this was actually pretty fun to watch, but the fact that they put almost every funny scene in the trailer kind of ruins it for me. Without the element of surprise, they're not half as funny as they would be if they weren't shown in the trailer. Overall, it wasn't a terrible movie. There's plenty of positive things about it. For one, it's an interesting concept. I think the incorporation of classical covers of modern music was well done and even funny at times. Either. The actors did a good job. I especially like Caitlin Deaver. I think she was wonderful in Unbelievable. Visually, the movie looks really good and there's a lot of clever moments. But it could have been so much more if they had put their creative energy entirely on all that instead of putting half of it on tired feminist lines. It is what it is, I guess. It's definitely not the worst movie I've seen in recent years, so... I won't complain about anything else. Well, except for... Do you like sports? Not really. Just seven more hours to go. Then, the rest of our lives. Right. Why did they have to do him dirty like that? Why couldn't you let them have a happy ending? Honestly, you would have been better just killing them off. 